All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We seek His guidance and we seek His forgiveness. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within our sins. And we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the evil within our souls. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, then no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah has chosen misguidance for, then no one can guide. I bear witness and I testify that there is no Lord worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I bear witness and I testify that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and most beloved of prophets to Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, addressing the people of Iman, where he says, O you who believe, O you who have attained faith, have attained Iman, fee Allah the fee he is deserving of. Fee Allah the way he should be feed. And do not die except in the state of Islam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we die in the state of Islam. And that our last words in his dunya are la ilaha illallah. And that we live in a state of iman, a state of faith, a state of belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a state of strong iman and strong and firm belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that we reach the level of ihsan. That we reach the level of ihsan, which is as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَاهُ فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ Al-Ihsan is to worship Allah as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in reality, in this dunya, you will never see Allah. But verily, the person who reaches Ihsan knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is constantly watching that person. فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكُ Verily Allah, He sees all. My dear brothers in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Holy Quran, وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Holy Quran, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Holy Quran, the first verse, that there is not a blessing that is upon you except that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ General, a general verse that every ni'mah is from Allah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He also says, وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوهَا If you were to count the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you will never be able to what? You will never be able to count them. You will never be able, and تُحْصُوهَا here, there's many meanings to it. You will never be able to reach the level of returning those favors to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning you will never be able to do enough deeds, enough good to repay Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like the man that is brought forward on the day of judgment. Do you want to enter Jannah through your deeds and your actions or through the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Now this man, he worshipped Allah constantly for many years. Constant ibadah. Constant worship, constant ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is from the previous nations as the Prophet sallallahu he says. So this man, he wants to come and he wants to enter Jannah from his actions. Oh Allah, I did so much. So Allah says, bring his actions and place them on the scale. And bring the blessing, the ni'mah of eyesight and put it on the scale. The eyesight, the ni'mah of eyesight overweighed all of that man's actions. Just the ni'mah of eyesight. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ There is not a blessing that is bestowed upon you except that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why my dear brother in Islam, it is a must, 
It is a must that every single person shows their need to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shows that they are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And shows that they have conviction and firm belief that it is all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ You, O son of Adam, O creation, you are those who are in need of Allah. أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ You are the ones who are in need. You are the ones who are in poverty and are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ Allah is the all rich, the all praised, subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brothers in Islam, never think, never think that a ni'mah that has come to you, that you are the reason for that ni'mah. No, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never think that that wealth that you have made, that business transaction that went through, that there were 50 other people there that were going for that same job. Or there was five people there going for that same job. And it came to you. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not from your own actions. From the most evil ways that shaitan corrupts the understanding of son of Adam is that he makes him think that this wealth that I have compiled, that this ibadah that I am doing, that this wife and these kids that I have, that this family house that I have built, it is from my doing. And it is from my actions. No, it is not. It is all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِن نِعْمَةٍ Allah. There is not a ni'mah that is bestowed upon you, O son of Adam, except that it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And do not think that because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me wealth, giving me money, sending me business, sending me work, sending me, Allah must love me. No, that's not a way to think or to place, to say that this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says in the hadith, he says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُعْتِي الدُّنْيَا مَنْ يُحِبْ وَمَنْ لَا يُحِبْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives the dunya to the one he loves and the one that he doesn't love. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the dunya to the one he loves and the one he doesn't love. Fir'aun, Haman, all the previous kings and emperors that had wealth and so much wealth, does that mean that Allah loves them? And then the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, وَلَكِنْ يُعْطِ الدُّنْيَا لَا يُعْطِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ لَا يُعْطِ الْإِيمَانَ إِلَّا لِمَنْ يُحِبْ but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives iman only to the ones that he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives iman only to the ones that he loves. The existence of son of Adam, you are breathing, the disbeliever is breathing. You are working, the disbeliever is working. You are married, the disbeliever is married. You have children, the disbeliever has children. You have wealth, you have a home, the disbeliever has the same. But what has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala given you that he hasn't given them? Is that iman. That belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The shahada of la ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. And until you work and you thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that ni'mah, you will find that that ni'mah could turn and become a niqma upon you. Can become a reason for your misguidance. Can become a reason for your going astray. 
can become a reason for you turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's for a short time. Even if it's for a short period of time. What gives you? What gives you? Guarantee that during that time your soul will not be taken. What gives you the guarantee that during that time of ghafla, during that time that you have turned away from Allah, during that time that you were doing that sin, that your soul will not be taken away. One of the major reasons of the destruction of the men and the females in the society is the lack the lack of giving fear to the sin that is committed. The lack of fear of Allah in general. The lack of fear of Allah in general. The things that are happening, the things that are taking place in the Ummah, within the youth, the older generations, the matters that are taking place. Wallahi, it will it will freak you out how many cases of adultery weekly that we get. And when I say adultery, I mean married couples. I mean a married husband cheating and, com and committing adultery. A married wife cheating, committing adultery. How many cases of drugs? Of husbands addicted to drugs? Of wives addicted to drugs? How many cases of alcohol? Of gambling? of abuse, of this, of that, all of this, where did it come from? From the lack of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From the lack of shyness, feeling shy when that sin is committed, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching you. As they say and mentioned from the words of the previous nations, as I mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet if you don't have shyness, if you don't have haya to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then do what you want. And that's what people are doing, they're doing what they want. Why? Because they have no shyness to Allah. They have no haya towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the disrespect of the ni'mah, not thanking the ni'mah, not thanking the blessings of Allah, is one of the reasons that this happens and this takes place. Because when the person, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has given them wealth, has given them a new car, a new house, furniture, that which they want to buy, and they are saying, Alhamdulillah, that all of this is from Allah. I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I never would have imagined that I got this except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave it to me. And He's thanking Allah and He's humble. And between the one who has exactly the same, but is walking around with his head held high, and me, and I am the one, and it is from me. That ni'mah that he was given, and he disrespected it, and he didn't thank for it, it will become a niqmah. It will become a destroyer upon that person. My dear brother in Islam, thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah that you have. And never think that you don't have a ni'mah to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. You will always have a ni'mah that you need to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for it. وَلَا إِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ And if you thank Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely increase from that ni'mah. And Islam itself is the greatest ni'mah that needs to be thanked. So my dear brothers in Islam, don't be from the ones who is not thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Human beings amongst each other. In the fitrah of the human being is that if I do good for someone, if I go out of my way, knowing that he hasn't done anything to me for him to deserve it, or I'm not in a position to give him anything in the first place, but yet I go and I give him, and I help him, and I assist him. And then he doesn't say thank you. What's the stance of the son of Adam? What did you think of that person? I went out of my way for him. I did this for him, did that, and he didn't thank me. 
وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلِ الْأَعْلَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the highest example is to Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you iman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you health Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you things that you would never have dreamed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you and given you and given you and you haven't done anything in return to say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala needs to give this to me but yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he still says وَلَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you say thank you, if you say Alhamdulillah, if you say Alhamdulillah on the ni'am that he has given me, Alhamdulillah on the blessings that he has given me, you will find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase from those ni'am. And with the increasing of the ni'am, the increasing of the thanking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also come with it. And it is sufficient enough to look at the stories of the Sahaba. Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu, when he first migrated to Medina, he was bankrupt, had nothing. Gave everything for the sake of Allah. Had nothing whatsoever. Went to the marketplace the first day, came back, began his business. And then slowly built himself till he became one of the rich companions. And then when he became rich and Allah blessed him, every time he would come richer and richer, his sadaqah will increase and increase more. Uthman radiallahu anhu had so much wealth before he died, all he had was two camels and his house that he was living in and the slaves that were with him. And that's it. He gave everything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing that he's going to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessings that he has bestowed upon you. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the ni'mah of iman, for the ni'mah of Islam. Thank Allah constantly for this ni'mah. Before these ni'am, these blessings are stripped away from us. And it's sufficient enough for you to look outside and to see what is happening with the Muslim society, the Muslim community when it comes to these matters. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حق حمده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي من بعده عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي المخطئة بتقوى الله فهي خير وصية وهي خير زاد وتزودوا فإن خير الزاد التقوى My dear brothers in Islam, I advise myself and I advise you to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to tread carefully in this dunya, not to fall in the prohibitions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For there is nothing that destroys the son of Adam like the one who indulges in the sins and who enjoys the sins and who const constantly returns to the sins without seeking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which will make the son of Adam constantly return to Allah. For every son of Adam is a sinner. كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمَ خَطَّى But the best of sinners are those who what? Those who repent. Those who repent. That when they commit that sin, they repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Seek the forgiveness. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a simple action for you to do and to implement from today. And we all know this. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, whoever says after every salat, Subhanallah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 33 times. And then finishes the 100 with La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. Ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambihi, walau kana mithlu zabad al-bahr. Whoever says that after every salat, his sins will be forgiven. Even if they were so much like the foam of the sea. Meaning that as long as there are waves that are happening in the sea, there's going to be what? There's going to be foam. From a simple action, after every salat, you do this tasbih, tahmeed, takbir, and finish it off with La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulku lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir, غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمِ مِنْ ذَنْبِهِ The previous sins will be forgiven by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep that connection for your sins to be forgiven, my dear brother in Islam.
every Muslim dreams to be. Up in Jannah, 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 Jannah. It pies by some destiny. Inshallah, Jannah, 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 Jannah.